Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Omicron has been detected in nine PAHO member countries. This story takes a lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday, 17th December 2021. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. Detected in nine Pan American territories, the Omicron variant, while supposedly milder in nature, can spell a further surge in hospitalizations, the Pan American Health Organization says. Over Shitawari Rupnarayan of TV6 News reports. The Pan American region was 75,000 infections short of registering a milestone 1 million new COVID cases in the past week. It's an 18.4% increase in COVID cases from previous weeks. So far, the Delta variant is still predominating in all the sub-regions of the Americas. As of today, the Omicron variant has been detected in nine countries and territories of our region. The USA, Canada, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, Cuba, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and Bermuda. And Omicron detected in our region has been mostly associated to travelers. While widely described as mild, research globally says the Omicron variant has a doubling rate of 1.8 days, while data is still coming in. We have different scenarios on the table. The co-circulation of both Delta and Omicron variants in during the coming weeks and months is one of them. But in all scenarios, countries should prepare for strengthening their health services for a higher influx of patients when we see the trends going up. But the basics to infection prevention still hold. Regardless of the variants circulating, all the public health measures already implemented to limit the transmission of the virus, including the social distancing, including the systematic use of masks in closed public spaces, and of course, including the vaccination campaign to reduce the risk of severe disease and death. All these public health measures are working. These are extremely efficient measures when strictly implemented. And therefore, these measures should be maintained Still, some territories face their steepest surge ever. In the Caribbean, while infections are down overall, Trinidad and Tobago reached its highest weekly COVID case count and cases rose by 66% in St. Lucia over the last week. Meanwhile, the Cayman Islands reported the highest weekly COVID incidence rate of any country or territory in the Americas. 
Vaccination remains a major combatant to the virus, with TNT this week joining the list of territories offering a third shot. Not for Omicron, but for Delta, the sound um, scientific evidence we have uh, for uh, people 60 years, uh, uh, over 60 years uh, of age, they need a third dose if they have received Sinopharm or Sinovac because uh, the uh, immunity begins to decrease. So these uh, people over 60 having received these vaccines should also receive a third dose. As it relates to the vaccination of children, PAHO recommends each country does its own assessment of available vaccines before coming to a decision on authorizing its local use. Or Vishy Tawari Rupnarain, TV6 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley has called on the Unity Workers' Union to end the current industrial action involving some of the island's nurses and return to negotiation in good faith. Prime Minister Mia Motley insisted that government had made two attempts to have the dispute settled, but to no avail. The majority of nurses that I know are committed, and I do not believe that they will fall for any moose by persons who clearly are not following industrial protocols, the best precepts of industrial relations protocols, but who equally, in my view, as an opposition senator, and along with other forces of opposition, clearly want to be able to bring some level of disruption to this country on the eve of Christmas, in my judgment, because they feel we are in a silly season. Now, if this is wrong, then come out and negotiate in good faith and deal with people in good faith. Because what you have here is a strike taking place for the last 9, 10, 11 days, whatever it is, in circumstances where the event that was to cause the strike has not happened. Prime Minister Mia Motley also revealed that the striking nurses will not be paid for the time they have been staging the industrial action. There are certain basic rules in law and we share them. The word may is discretionary and the word shall is mandatory. At clause 20 of the second schedule, paragraph 20 of the second schedule of that act, it makes it clear that a person who has withdrawn their labor for strike shall not receive that remuneration. The Director of Finance will tell you that it is mandatory. Similarly, there are some persons who didn't indicate they were on strike, but they just didn't turn up, they didn't call, they didn't give an excuse, they didn't do nothing. And similarly, at Clause 15, the power to be able to deal with them through the remuneration is equally there. These are not new issues. These are not the first persons to strike. They will not be the last persons to strike. Meanwhile, several of the island's trade unions have distanced themselves from the strike action called by the Unity Workers Union. The president of the National Union of Public Workers, Kimberly Agard, says her union represents most of the nurses and they are not on board with the action. And UPW is not participating or sanctioning any strike action at this time. The NUPW itself has internal structures for instituting such action. General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, also criticized the action, saying that it is reckless and goes against established labor practice. The withdrawal of labor. What I would like to say is that the Executive Council of the Barbados Workers' Union has always functioned in a manner, yes, the observed process, but recognizing that strike action is the ultimate action. It is one that is not contemplated lightly and without due consideration, not only for the issues, but for the support. We don't go into action and then try to build support for action. And we certainly do not go into action where we do not have a majority. And so... Um, even on that basis, 
I will choose to express my disappointment in that regard. Five months after the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse of Haiti, his wife Martine Moïse says she will never forget what caused blood to flow in the hearts of all and urged the country to unite in keeping with the wishes of her late husband. Moïse was gunned down at his private residence on July 7th. His wife was severely injured during the attack and was flown to the United States for medical attention. The authorities have detained several people, including former members of the Colombian army, as the probe continues into the killing. Jamaican authorities have also detained Colombian national and former military officer Mario Antonio Palacios. Additionally, last month, Turkish National Police arrested a Haitian business person who was wanted for involvement in the assassination. An international arrest warrant had been issued for the suspect, identified as Samir Handal. In a video message, Martin Moïse repeated her call for justice and urged unity to build the country. Meanwhile, former Public Works Minister Nader Huasias said he is very worried about the way in which the investigation into the assassination is going and is critical for what he termed the maneuvers orchestrated by people identified as being involved in the murder. Jamaica's local government minister, Desmond McKenzie, is warning against hosting parties during the festive Christmas season. More in this TVJ News item with Vashon Brown. The local government minister says he has been receiving numerous calls and messages from people all across the island who want to know one thing. What are the plans for nightclubs and parties during the holiday season? It's why Desmond McKenzie says he wants to be very clear. Madam Speaker, I wish to state that the band on parties and nightclubs and other such gathering as round robbing gate parties are still in effect, Madam Speaker. He argues that the municipal corporation and the police will not be issuing any permits for the staging of these events. Local hospitals have already started to prepare for a possible fourth wave of COVID amidst global concerns about the Omicron variant. So Mr. McKenzie says Jamaicans cannot afford to be reckless. We are going to be working with the authorities to ensure that any breach under these regulations that ban these events we will be out, Madam Speaker, to ensure that we get compliance. In the meantime, there will be some changes to the Disaster Risk Management Act to facilitate the operations of markets. The opening period for markets, Mondays to Saturdays, Madam Speaker, will now be from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we have increased... The open, we have increased the closing hours of markets. On Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, markets will be permitted to open until midnight, an hour before the national curfew begins. The markets will, however, remain closed on Sundays and public holidays. The opening hours of village bars and taverns have been extended to 9 p.m. as of the 10th, Madam Speaker, and that will go right through until the 13th of January. The tavern bars and village bars and the other areas under the disaster act, like the opening of gyms and, and other such um, entities, will remain open until midnight, New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve. Vashon Brown, TVJ News. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going Food Fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Grand Ants will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. 
their safety measures are excellent. So hold on, you just order online and Foodfair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more. 